Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing News. <clears throat> Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Before I get into the rematch of Tony Thompson's victory over David Price, let me just congratulate Andy Murray. It looks like I was extremely unfair and unduly harsh in criticizing Andy Murray's mental approach. I apologize for that. Andy Murray proved me wrong. He absolutely destroyed my bracket for Wimbledon. Um, when I'm not online, believe it or not, I actually bet more on tennis than I do boxing. And I have to tip my hat to Andy Murray, who became the first British man in 77 years to win Wimbledon. He did it in spectacular fashion, winning the finals in straight sets. I, for one, thought Murray was going to have problems getting out of the semifinals against Jankowicz. Murray lost the first set, then roared back. For those of you keeping count, Andy Murray won his last six sets at Wimbledon in the semis and the finals. Truly a spectacular performance. Great tennis player. I was on the wrong side of that one. That was a swing and a miss by me. Now, I've been on Facebook. I've heard from a few people. Uh, many people think on a weekend where I have a win, like the Tony Thompson win, that I'm riding high. Far from it. Um, what the truth is, is actually you have wins and losses. Um, some of the wins are high profile. But of course, your bank account only knows the net. And I took a loss on Wimbledon because of Andy Murray's brilliance. And I congratulate Andy on that. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to dampen in any way, shape, or form the intensity of my opinions because that's what gambling's all about, taking risks, believing in your takes. But I have to concede that the take I had on Andy Murray was based on a pre Yvonne Lendl assessment of him. He's clearly a different guy. He's clearly grown up quite a bit. He's now a closer, and he showed that at Wimbledon. Let's talk about this Tony Thompson fight. I know by now this fight has been analyzed ad nauseum here online. And I know some of the biggest names in recent boxing history, namely Lennox Lewis, has expressed some opinions and has vowed to work with David Price on things like stamina going forward. Let me just add a few comments to the public comments on this fight, right? It's my belief that if I were to sign up right now, today, for a Spanish speaking contest in a hundred days against a native born Spanish speaker, someone who has been speaking Spanish their entire lives, that I could hire the best teachers. I could hire people who have won Spanish-speaking contests in the past. I could do all of that. I could be a diligent student. I could spend eight hours a day in the gym studying my Spanish. I could do road work in the morning to sharpen my Spanish skills. Right? I can eat right. I could keep myself physically at my peak. And I could still lose miserably when the tournament takes place. Because whatever I've done in a hundred days isn't going to top what my opponent has done in learning Spanish over their entire life. Now, while I have seen some fighters recreate themselves with new trainers, think Marcus Maidana and Robert Garcia, that is so rare. That is so much of an outlier 
that that's not something I can bank on, right? David Price right now is in his 30s. Lennox Lewis had a skill set from early on that David Price doesn't have right now. Understand too that if you're a heavyweight contender, you're going up against fierce competition, right? Unless David Price is going to leave the worldwide stage and try to fight non-top tier fighters for, in my opinion, multiple years, unless he's going to literally teach himself new skills. I don't believe Lennox Lewis or anyone else is going to do much good for him from a training perspective in the short term, right? If you're invested in David Price's long-term career, okay, maybe retooling his game will get him someplace in a couple of years, but not before then. Here's what I saw in the fight, right? David Price, right-handed fighter, is much more effective, and I mean much more effective, when he's able to land his left jab. Even when you have a great punch, and it is a great punch, like David Price's right hand up top, right? Even when that punch is so good that when Price landed it twice in this fight, Tony Thompson went down twice. I don't know what the referee was doing when Tony, Pri when Tony Thompson gets knocked into the ropes the second time, right? That's a knockdown, folks. The ropes can't prevent you from hitting the canvas. If I'm three feet away from the ropes and some guy cracks me on the jaw and then I fall back into the ropes, that's a knockdown. David Price, in my opinion, got two knockdowns in this fight. The first one, obviously, was clean and was counted. The second one was also clean. Right? Tony Thompson, a vet, tried to pretend that it was a rabbit punch. He motions to his head. He looks at the referee. The referee gets fooled. Tony Thompson avoided a 10-8 round. But make no mistake. When David Price landed that right hand flush, Tony Thompson hit the canvas. The first time, Thompson hits the canvas so hard that there was a question as Tony Thompson got up whether he could continue. Now even with that great a punch, even with that natural a skill, at the top level, in the heavyweight division, you have to frame it. It's almost like a magician. You have to distract an opponent or keep an opponent busy with something else, right? If the opponent knows you're in there trying to land a right hand up top, they're going to do things to defend themselves. Against the southpaw, David Price can't land that left jab. He can't set up the right hand. Take a look at the first round. You're going to see David Price comes out. He's not pumping a jab because Tony Thompson has taken away the angle. That's what southpaws do. That's why they're so hard to fight, right? They take away your lead jab if you're not a great jabber. So David Price is in there trying to paw with the left hand, right? He has the left hand out and he's just trying to knock down punches. Here's the problem. You know when he has the left hand already out at a 90 degree angle trying to knock down punches, you know he's not going to throw a left hook with that. Right? The, the hand's already extended. It's out here someplace. Right? So really, all he had was that right hand <clears throat> against a pretty good defensive fighter. In my opinion, David Price wasn't even David Price in this fight. David Price is not David Price against Southpaws. Don't get fooled by his destruction of Audley Harrison. That's a first round knockout. As I like to say, you should view first round knockouts with some skepticism. 
All they prove is that the guy was able to land his money punch in the first round. Right? I'm more impressed, quite frankly, by knockouts that take place after a few rounds because then, of course, by then, the fighters themselves have played chess. By then, the knockout is the residue of desire. In the first round, it doesn't necessarily mean that David Price has mastered fighting southpaws. He clearly has it. Right? David Price without his left jab is not David Price. Let me also make another point. Right? Tony Thompson is in his 40s. I understand Tony doesn't look like he has dazzling hand speed. I understand Tony doesn't look like he has dazzling foot speed. I understand Tony Thompson physique-wise doesn't look like he's a great athlete. Right? But we we watch boxing. <clears throat> and the one thing we know, the one thing we all should know about Tony Thompson is that he can fight fast, right? He can set a pace that if you're not ready for it, you're gonna fall apart. What makes Tony fast? <clears throat> David Price was in there, left hands neutralized by David Price, right? He has it out, he's just trying to knock down Tony's punches with it, as if he could just push Tony's punch, you know, hands out of the way so he could land the right hand. So David Price is a one-handed fighter in this fight, right? There's not that eminent threat of a left hook that you have with Vladimir Klitschko, <clears throat> right? He's a one-handed fighter. Also, Price, too, let's face it, isn't really threatening to lean in and hit you with hard body shots either. So he's one-handed up top. So if I'm fighting him, you know, I'm worried about that right hand. But when that right hand's out of the picture, if I'm too far off at the side for that right hand to hurt me, then I'm not too worried. Tony Thompson's different. Tony Thompson's a two-handed fighter. You have to worry about both hands. Let's talk about the punches. You have to worry about multiple punches from both hands. This speeds up the pace of the match. Tony Thompson was coming in, right? He's a southpaw, so his lead hand is his right hand. He's coming in throwing a right uppercut. Let me point out, it landed, right? David Price had to worry about the punches Tony Thompson is throwing. Not only that, Thompson, on his front foot, is throwing short punches, right? It's a two-handed attack. Thompson will throw a left, a right, a left, a right. The punches are coming in at different angles, right? That right might be a jab. That right might be a hook. That right might be an uppercut, right? The left hand straight, could hit him in the chest, could hit him in the t um, head. And of course, Thompson is an angle guy. So he's off at the side and he's hitting you with short punches. The hand speed doesn't have to be blistering for a guy to set a fast pace, right? Thompson is up on you. He's not in front of you. He's off at the side. He's hitting you with both hands. You don't know what the punches will be. They're coming at different angles, right? And he's throwing power shots. In other words, it's not just feather duster right hands. His lead hand is hitting you with hooks and uppercuts. Now, David Price didn't have the skill set to deal with it, right? He's an athlete. He's a strong athlete. Right? Unfortunately, fighting actually involves more than that. Look at the second and third rounds. By the way, these are rounds where Tony hits the canvas. You're going to see that David Price can't clinch. Right? Price is not the kind of guy 
who can take a step forward and smother a faster fighter. He can't clinch. He doesn't have the boxing skill to clinch and turn you so he can then back away into the middle of the ring. Right? We already know he can't jab against a southpaw. We already know he can't frame his right hand. Right? In other words, he's not keeping you busy over here, then boom. That's not him. He can't handle distance. Think about it. When's the last time you've seen Vladimir Klitschko up on the ropes with a guy inside of his jab range giving him the business like Tony Thompson gives David Price the business in the fourth and fifth rounds? Right? A lot of boxing is positioning. Vladimir Klitschko keeps you outside. If you get inside, he's not going to be there on the ropes with you standing in front of him, right, without some game plan. That's where David Price was, right? The positioning's bad. Tony Thompson's too close to him. David Price is up on the ropes. He can't even take a step forward and tie up Tony. It's not even a cat and mouse game. He hasn't tricked Tony into coming inside like Juan Manuel Marquez does so he could dole out some preset punch. He has no preset punch. He's up on the ropes because he's been conned into being up on the ropes. He's been outthought and outmaneuvered. Right? So David Price, quite frankly, isn't at the level where he's able to control distance and where he is in the ring. And, of course, inside. Who do you think is better? The guy throwing the shorter punches with the two-hand attack who's bouncing at angles? Or the other guy whose best punch is a long right hand? Who do you think is the better fighter inside? So I heard Lennox Lewis talk about how he's going to work with David Price on his stamina. Is that going to help David Price's lack of an inside game? Is that going to help David Price's inability to land a lead left jab against a southpaw? Is David Price's stamina going to help David Price actually learn how to clinch inside? Right late in this fight, it looked to me like David Price actually started getting up on his feet and bouncing around. Well, that's great. But if you're going to bounce around, don't you need to have a game to go with it? Don't you need to touch the guy with a jab? Don't you need to be setting up stuff? Just because you're bouncing around doesn't mean you're doing anything to hurt your opponent. And if you're bouncing around and the opponent continues to step forward, like Tony Thompson does, don't you need to be able to do something to the David Price people? Did you see your man land any meaningful body punches this entire fight? And isn't that troubling? Because isn't this fight the rematch? Hasn't he seen enough of Tony Thompson to have at least put some kind of method into his approach? So I'll just say this. I believe that David Price should have fought a Klitschko two years ago when his name was hot when we were mesmerized by his athleticism, by his power, by his size, when we the fans were tricked into believing that because he is big like Klitschko and athletic like Klitschko and has a great right hand like Vladimir Klitschko, that perhaps he'd be competitive against Klitschko. And let me just say, David Price has a puncher's chance in whatever fight he's in. He came this close to winning the rematch. Right? Thompson's badly hurt when he goes down the first time. That's not a flash knockdown. That's a guy getting hit by a car. Right? Instead, David Price's people decided to put him in 
with top contending heavyweights, right? Tony Thompson, in my opinion, I've said this many times, I believe he's America's best heavyweight, right? Big mistake. Why would you put him in against a crafty southpaw when neither Klitschko brother holding a belt nor Alexander Povetkin holding a belt is a southpaw? What exactly was he trying to learn to prepare him for fighting those guys, right? Also, Tony Thompson looked carefully at the resume. He's only lost to Vladimir Klitschko in something like the last 10 years, right? That's who Tony Thompson is, an elite contender, elite, right? Did you really believe that Tony Thompson was just going to stand there while well, David Price came in and hit him with a long right hand, right? Because let me tell you, the disturbing thing, the second fight's even more disturbing than the first fight. The disturbing thing is that David Price started the second fight well, landed some big shots, and then got methodically undressed by a superior technician. Right? As I said early in this video, these knockouts that come after a few rounds are the residue of design. Right? Tony Thompson really showed that he can, even with a bad start, come back and just outskill his opponent. Good luck to Lennox Lewis in teaching David Price the skills that it would take to be effective against a Tony Thompson, right? This was bad matchmaking by David Price's team. And right now, he's going to have to retool. Right now, he's been exposed. Right now, the outcry for David Price against the Klitschko's has been dampened considerably. The young fighters watching this video, my advice is simply, if you have some holes in your game, but you're a puncher who always has a puncher's chance, when heavyweight champions are giving interviews, hinting that you're on their short list of opponents, my advice is to not take difficult fights like this, right? Leap at the opportunity for the chance at history. David Price could have holes in his game. If he lands a lucky punch, then he's as much a heavyweight champion as Buster Douglas was 20 years ago. And it's so historical, I mentioned Buster Douglas's name and many of you know who he is, right? Instead, David Price decided to take the difficult road and he faces a very long one coming back. To the Price crowd, congratulations. And also, let me close by saying again, Congratulations to Andy Murray. Thanks for stopping by.